Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. This video will be centered around five different ways you can go about getting 150 credit hours to sit for the uniform CPA exam. I have been asked this a few times. Also have been asked to share how I got 150 credit hours because I did not go the route of getting a master's degree or any additional education. Also please enjoy this Amish dress. This braid just makes it so much worse. I literally feel like I'm about to go hit the fields. Felt cute, might churn some butter later. Anyways, I am so weird. So let's go ahead and get started. A popular misconception with the idea of getting your additional education requirements to sit for the CPA exam is that it has to be accounting related and it does not have to. So that is fake news. You do not have to go and pursue additional accounting requirements as long as you do have your accounting requirements fulfilled for your state board. So every single state board is different. They require different things. But as long as you go to an accredited university, your accounting major, as long as you major in accounting, should fulfill the accounting requirements for the CPA exam. It would be kind of difficult for it not to, but again, you need to look at your state board and read the description and know ahead of time so you're not having to stumble upon having to figure out how the heck you're gonna fulfill this one additional accounting class that you didn't end up taking, but you still got your major because your university was unaware of how things work in the CPA world. But the most popular route that CPA candidates tend to choose is to go forth with their master's degree after their bachelor's just to go straight through. And a lot of universities have a four plus one program or something of that sort, that's what ours was called, where you take an additional year of classes and you end up with your master's degree within five years. That is a very intensive accelerated way to do it because you're taking like 15 to 18 credit hours every single semester for five years. It doesn't leave any room in case you fail a class or you don't like a class or you want to take a little break. There's just no room for breathing, but it's the quickest way. You, in five years, you're literally done and you have a bachelor's and a master's. And it's, my university did an MBA, but I'm sure a MAC program would be similar. As for getting your master's degree, it does not have to be a MAC or an MBA. You can get a master's in whatever you wanna get a master's in, but be aware of the prerequisites probably required to even get accepted into that master's program. But if you wanted to do more of a finance route or something of that sort, I'm sure it's welcome. As long as, again, that you have your accounting classes already fulfilled for the CPA exam if you plan on doing the CPA exam. Which is the whole point of doing this video. Also, in case you're unaware, I changed clothes this is hours later. A lot of the MAC programs actually incorporate the CPA exam within them. And how that works is, let's say you take your tax for entities class. There's also like advanced auditing class. There's several classes because it's a whole entire degree program. Um, but you will be taking that related CPA exam during that semester of class. So you'll have like a tax class. Let's say it's in the morning if you're doing a full-time MAC program. You may have tax class from like 9 to 12. But then the rest of the day they tell you to study for the um, reg CPA exam. And so... That program allows you as a class, your entire program or cohort, however you guys wanna consider it, will take the CPA exams together. You'll schedule them together and you'll take them. So you'll take like reg, then FAR when you go into your advanced financial reporting class, and then auditing, BC, all of those. Um, so you're expected to have passed the CPA exam along with getting your master's degree in accounting. It's kind of set up really well, but the biggest drawback that I see from that, one, well, let me start with the pros, would be that you're forced to study for the CPA exam. You have other people with you, so you're in a community of people who are also studying for the CPA exam and getting their master's, so you're not by yourself, which is kind of a struggle, at least that I struggled with, with studying by myself, because I felt like I was all alone out here just being miserable, when really all of you guys are my support system, so it worked out really well. You also have professors that know the CPA exam inside and out, or at least they should if they're going to frame a class around the CPA exam. But a big drawback that I saw that a lot of my friends are dealing with is when you take that CPA exam, let's say you take reg first with your tax course, you may fail it. It's a very high possibility that you fail the exam. Well, you automatically move on to FAR next or BEC next. And I have two friends right now that are in a MAC program two different universities and they have failed their cpa exams going along and they keep their they don't have time to retake the exams until the very end of the MAC program. You do not graduate with your MAC until you pass the CPA exams. So they will have to retake them at the end, kind of delay their MAC program. And then whenever they pass the CPA exams, then they can become a master 
of accounting. <laughs> That's really the only drawback that I see, but that is something to be aware of if you guys wanted to go that route, but make sure that your MAC program actually does incorporate the CPA exam if you guys want that. But there are several programs going down that route that is literally an entire master's program catered around the CPA exam and obtaining the CPA license, which is really neat. So that may be for you. Okay, back to the regular video. <laughs> Another way to get your 150 credit hours is to do a double major. This is very popular, at least with my friends in school. A lot of them went through and got their accounting and finance major. I have coworkers that did the same. This one kind of makes the most sense because you are gonna have a lot of overlap classes with the business, the general business classes you have to take to get your accounting major, you will have already taken. So doing the finance route, you have additional classes, but not like too much. So it's not really setting you back a lot of time. So that's a popular way of getting 150. I had a friend in college who got her accounting major and then she double majored in theater. She wanted to open up a real local, small acting, studio theater type deal so that was like the perfect thing for her to do and she had 150 credits she ended up graduating with like 160 or something like that but she was able to sit, sit for the cpa exam during school because she was still able because she had the credits that she needed i've also seen a double major in accounting and chemistry now that one was a whole other they went through and did chemistry first and then realized they didn't want to do chemistry and they wanted to do accounting and so they ended up just changing their route in junior year of college and he's like a super intelligent guy but anyhow so he there's all kinds of different ways he's definitely gonna have 150 and he'll have the accounting credits to set for the cpa exam but also be able to go over here and like test molecules on the side i don't know what chemistry does sorry i'm dumb a third way is to pick up an additional minor. So this will not give you a lot of credits because I believe a minor is only either 15 or 18 additional credits. I guess it probably depends on the minor. Um, so depending on where you're at in your education, if you've taken any additional classes, if you just need 15 more credits to, sit, to get the 150, then picking up an additional minor would be great. This was 100% going to be my plan. I plan on picking up another minor um, we were starting a forensic minor and it ended up just falling through so we didn't have that option but i wanted to do that there was also just finance that i could have done but i just did not i did not like finance that much so i didn't really want to do anything extra with that but for me to pick up an extra minor because i graduated in may within four years i would have had to stay through december a whole extra semester um, to get that minor and then graduate in December. And that would have been totally fine. Whereas I just decided to graduate in May and pick up additional classes at a community college. I'll get more into detail into that in a minute, but that way I was able to start my career in September and not have to worry about still fulfilling 150 credits. That was my own personal journey, but everybody's different. I did actually graduate with a minor, but my university is a little different because everyone graduates with a Bible minor. So I had my accounting major and a Bible minor and we had to graduate with 130 credits. I actually ended up with 135 just to the fact I had to take like like remedial reading because my reading comprehension was horrible which makes sense with cpa exams of me sucking so bad <laughs> but i made it through somehow miraculous thank you lord but that actually just got cut obviously last graduating class to have the bible minor all the students after me are able to pursue their bible minor but they have to go out of their way whereas i didn't have a choice i was like had to take these bible classes to get the bible minor so that's just a whole little unrelated unless you guys go to the college that i went to <laughs> you won't graduate with a bible minor anymore and you will have 120 credits just like the rest of the country <laughs> fourth way of fulfilling the education requirement 150 credits for the cpa exam would be just to take random electives throughout your college experience if i would have known early on in my college life that i wanted to pursue the cpa route later on i probably would have jumped on this random elective idea because it would be a lot of fun like my friend she took pottery and ceramic ceramics with her accounting major she took walking we had exercising weightlifting bird watching all these random classes that you don't need at all for your major and they're not even going to count towards an accounting elective because accounting electives are different like i took forensic accounting as an accounting elective um, but bird watching is not going to go in your accounting degree on it for you to graduate with a bachelor's in accounting but we are in a unique situation as cpa candidates where we're able to pursue our degree but also we need these extra credits so why not take these random classes like improv and cooking and knife skills and photography whatever your college offers especially if you go to a big state university they've got tons tons of classes out there. There's so many fun ones you can get involved in. So if you're not really looking for that additional master's degree or double major extra education requirements, I would definitely suggest fitting in some random electives if they fit in your schedule. Um, but also if you're working through college, I did the entire time I was in college. It's, it's hard to like throw in an extra three hour credit course when you're already tied down as it is. But it's a lot of fun. It's another option out there for you guys. 
The fifth and final idea that I have for you guys for obtaining the 150 credit hour requirement. Well, this applies for students that are in high school that have, several of you have commented on videos. You're like, I'm a sophomore in high school and what da, 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 da. And I'm like, what? how do you even know you're gonna be a CPA when you're in high school? I didn't know until I was like sophomore year, junior year of college before I even heard of what a CPA was. I had no idea, never heard of it. But anywho, if you're in high school and you already know you're wanting to pursue the CPA license, I would recommend you're jumping on all of those dual enrollment credit opportunities while you're in high school. I realize not every high High school offers this but some high schools offer an entire associate's degree while you're in high school that you're able to obtain depending on how advanced your high school is my high school offered um, six credit hours, up to six credit hours that were transferable to, a, to Tennessee State University or community college. I did not go that route. I went to a Christian college, so they didn't accept any credits like that. So that didn't really apply to me, but it was a really neat option and it kind of gives you a head start going into college anyhow. Also, those credits are typically like either English, reading, math, history, and those are already gonna be part of your degree audit anyhow with an accounting major. So it may not actually give you any extra, but at least it gives you extra room in your schedule in college to take extra electives or whatnot, where you're not having, you're not pressed for a college algebra and English. Why am I talking with my hands so much in this video? I'm over here signing to you guys. Okay, that's probably offensive, I don't know sign language. So those are the five most popular ways that CPA candidates tend to get their 150 credit hour required. That is not all of them. So don't feel limited by this video. Definitely get creative with it. You're allowed to, but make sure you go on nasba.org, their website, you click on your state that you plan. That's another thing. When, if you're in high school or even in college, you don't really know what state you may be working in, but you're able to transfer your CPA license. So let's say you're living in Oklahoma. You can test through Oklahoma and get an Oklahoma CPA license. And then let's say you fly out to LA and you're starting your career at a big four in LA, your, your license can transfer. Now there may be additional requirements and maybe little courses or a little mini test you have to take to transfer it, but it is an option. So don't feel limited by your state. I would recommend if you're kind of on the bridge of you don't really know what to do, I was there. You guys, I was in your shoes. I had no idea. I didn't even know I wanted to be a CPA until later on in college life. I would recommend either speaking with a guidance counselor at your school. Now granted, they're probably not going to know in detail what the requirements are and they're probably going to feel super overwhelmed if you even try to begin to explain the requirements to be a CPA because it's literally so detailed and confusing and complex. But if you have a mentor in your life or maybe a family member that's a CPA, I would recommend speaking with them, seeing what they would suggest. Also, just kind of figuring out if you know ahead of time kind of where you want to work in accounting, like if you want to work for a big four or a regional firm, if you just want to work in private industry or in government, because you may need a master's degree for the position that you aspire to work for. You may not, and you don't really want to be overqualified, spend a lot of money, have tons more student loans, but don't feel pressured on not knowing what you want to do because I didn't know what I wanted to do and I ended up with the best job ever, but that took tons and tons and tons and tons of prayer and patience and me just trusting the Lord that he was going to put me in a job that I really enjoyed and he did. I also went through several internships, some of them I loved, some of them I hated, so I've been through a lot. It wasn't just like planned out for me and easy going on this little cobblestone path. There were lots of missing bricks. <laughs> So in detail of how I got my 150 credits in case you're interested or not, I graduated from a university in exactly four years. So I started as a traditional college student, graduated high school in May, started in college in August, and I went in as a business major. And then the second semester of my freshman year, I switched over with accounting. And my friend Laura that I've mentioned several times in my videos, me and her were like, tied at the hip with our education. So basically we both came in as business, we both switched to accounting at the same time. We were in every single class all the way through college and we sat side by side at graduation. <laughs> so a very similar situation and actually she just officially got licensed with her CPA license last week. She passed the exams a year ago before I did but she hadn't started working yet. So she just now fulfilled her employment experience requirement, whatever it's called. So we're actually getting the license at the same exact time. Just we did it backwards, which is really neat. But anyways, you guys don't care. Oh, look at how many birds are on my bird feeder. This is why I'm so distracted during this video. I can't stop looking at them. They're so cute. They're all like the same thing. I wonder if they're the same family. What's happening here? I'm so weird. You guys are definitely gonna stop watching this video. I'm getting weirder and weirder. So once I decided that I was going to go the community college route and just take like random classes, and it kind of fit in with where I was in life because I just graduated. I'm interviewing for different jobs. It kind of just fell into my lap where I was gonna start working in the fall at some point, depending, like all the jobs I interviewed for, they were gonna start me in the fall. So I was just hoping to get the rest of my 15 credits in the summer. And I could have waited and like started work and then like did the extra credits throughout work, like online or in the evenings, but I didn't really 
really want to have to do that. I wanted to get them all out of the way. So I went on my community college website, found all these random classes. I literally made a list of every single class this community college offered that did not require any prerequisites. And so I had a lot of like chemistry ones, biology ones, but a bunch of random classes I knew I didn't want to take and that were going to be difficult. So I didn't want anything really difficult. I did almost end up having to take Spanish one, which would have been horrible because I did horrible with that in, in high school. But anyways, I ended up with public speaking, art history. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, look at this. I misspelled public speaking and put pubic speaking. <laughs> Oh, and gee, that's a whole other thing. This video is not rated R. Anyways, I took public speaking because I love public speaking and I never took that in college. Art history, drawing, secular ethics, which I was super excited for. That was a really fun class. And then health and wellness. And the health and wellness, I had to make sure it wasn't going to overlap with my healthy lifestyles, I think is what it was called at my university. Because that's another thing, be careful if you take additional classes just for the fun of it, that let's say you took English one in your university and then you take English one at your community college, it is very possible and probable that your CPA board is going to cancel out one of those and just assume that you took it as a retake to improve your grade, your letter grade. So be very careful that they have different titles and that the syllabuses syllabi shows that they are different classes. You cannot take the same class at two different colleges. And I was going to do that because there was a forensic accounting class offered at this community college. I wanted to take it so bad, but I already took forensic accounting at my university, so I couldn't do that. So yeah, I took five random classes. I finished in late July and I had 150 credits. And then I was interviewing with the state at the time. I had one three hour long interview, I really liked it. Felt like that was where I was being pulled to go. Ended up accepting the job offer and then I started in September and the rest is history. <laughs> I probably shared way more detail than you guys even care to know. But those are the ways that I have that you guys can do your 150 credit hours. Please comment down below if you guys did anything different. If you're already a CPA or you know somebody who's a CPA that did something different. Just to broaden everybody's perspectives and minds on the different options available to them. And it is hard because this is a field and so very specific. It's not common knowledge of what you're able to do. And you can't really just like ask your mom or dad or your cousin advice because they're not gonna know unless they're a CPA. And you really don't wanna screw yourself up where you're having to randomly take a three hour math class to fulfill the CPA requirement when you're in your career and you're ready to sit down for the exam. So you really wanna make sure you've got all your T's dotted and your I's crossed or whatever they're saying. <laughs> do I know my alphabet? I don't know. So thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully this video was helpful and I will see you guys next time in pubic speaking. <laughs> Bye.